YouTube, I just emptied my entire bank account on this brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro in space black. Now I'm finna share all of my secrets of how I set up all of these MacBooks as soon as I get them. So before you go any further with your MacBook or Mac computer, check out these secret tips. Now the first thing I have to do 100,000% is I go over here to system settings, I scroll down to where is the trackpad. And I have to enable tap to click, which is this switch right here. And see, I almost didn't enable it because I was trying to tap. Basically allows for you to just tap the trackpad in order to click and it's super clutch. You can also speed up your trackpad speed a little bit to navigate and also like when you're trying to click and drag, make it easier. I'm gonna show you a tip for that as well. And you know what, as a matter of fact, since we're talking about dragging, I'll show you guys that accessibility tip. So if you go to accessibility and you scroll down to pointer control, trackpad options under pointer control, right? Dragon style. Now you can turn this on and three finger drag. So that way, instead of me having to tap, hold, I can just use my three fingers and drag. Now doing this does remove a certain action that you can do with your trackpad, but it's not one that I use. So if you don't wanna enable uh, the three finger drag, you don't have to. So my next tips that I'm gonna show you guys is dealing with your display and resolution. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here to displays, right? And then I like more space. So as you guys can see by me choosing more space, I get more screen real estate because I'm using the full resolution of this 16 inch screen size, right? From that one adjustment. Now things do get smaller. So, you know what I mean? If your eyes aren't that good or you don't have your you know, glasses on, then you might want to reconsider, but I love that one. And true tone is typically on, I turn it off. It's the same thing with the auto adjust for the brightness. You can have that on if you want to, that's all personal preference. Now the next thing I'm gonna do to help aid in this new resolution adjustment is I'm going to change some settings within my dock. This dock down here is massive as you can see and that's just too big for me. Like I prefer to bring it down to a smaller size as you guys can see, now my screen real estate feels a lot larger. Now if you want it to hide when you're not using it, like, so that way you get your full screen, you can, and that way you have to drag down here to see it pop up. I turn that off, and I'm gonna tell you why. Typically, another thing that I do is I change the orientation or the placement of my dock. So as you guys can see right now, it's at the bottom. A lot of times I'll have it over here to the far right. The thing is, when you do that, it does take away some of your like window sizing. So if you're not up for that, don't go for it. I think the bottom is the most uh, ideal placement for most people. Okay, so now the next thing I do to aid in my screen resolution and desktop setup is this. So I'm gonna take a bunch of screenshots really quick so you guys can see the icon sizing. I love to adjust my icon sizing. So I would go into show view options. And as you guys can see, icon size is right here. So make them as small as you know, comfortable for you. Another thing I like to do is I'll change the text size. I like to go to the smallest. This is my personal thing, but it gives me so much more screen real estate and I love it. Now there's a couple other things I like to do while I'm in here. This next thing is snap to grid. So anytime you drop a new icon onto here, it's gonna follow a grid. So it's not just gonna be placed off center or anything. Everything's gonna line up nice and neat. Another thing that helps with neatness is, as you guys can see, I have a ton of these screenshots right here. If I go to stacks and I stack it by kind, all of those screenshots are now stacked together. If I had a bunch of uh, videos that were on my desktop, they were all stacked together or anything that's like or similar to, they'll stack together. So that's super clutch. And um, you can sort it by kind. Okay, so now that we're still on this desktop setup, there's something else I wanna show you guys. As you guys can see right here, you got your battery percentage, but you have to click in order to see that. I don't wanna have to click to know exactly the percentage of my battery. I would prefer to see it like up there and not just like a battery bar type thing. And there's a quick way to fix that. So if I were to go into system settings really fast, and if I were to go to the control center, and under battery, tap this right here, show percentage. Now I got my percentage up there. Okay, so now I got battery percentage in my menu bar. There's some other things I wanna add up there. And literally, if you open up your control center and you drag these items up here, you now get icons for them to uh, control them, right? So I got my display. Uh, a big one for me is sound. So 
I'm always using multiple sound sources. So just by the click, I can change the sound source. Um, and right here, as far as displays, if you want to like mirror your display and so forth, you get quick access right there. And then as far as Bluetooth go, if you got Bluetooth items and you want to have quick access to them right there, you can do that all by adding these from the control center up into that menu bar. Let's talk about widgets really quick because if you have the new Mac OS Sonoma, then you have access to these new widgets, not just the ones that you typically would see over here that you can edit by hitting edit widget right here, but now you can have them actually on your desktop. So you would just right click on your desktop, select edit widgets, then you would scroll through the widgets, the different ones. Let's just say I wanted this battery widget. Okay, let's just say I do the YouTube widget, right? And then I hit done. Once I'm done with that, as you guys can see, those are on my desktop for quick and easy access. And if you don't like what you have right there, you can go back to the edit widgets and then you can just hit this subtraction right here if you don't like that. So those are some cool new options in macOS Sonoma. Let's keep the video going. The next thing I would love to set up and optimize is my finder window. Now, as you guys can see, the way this finder window is set up right now, this is not to my liking. So let's fix it immediately. Now, if I go right here, I love column. Column view is my main view that I like to start off with, but there's more to the customization of this finder window that I really wanna get into. And also you can right click up here and hit customize toolbar, and you can customize what's up here in this toolbar. This is a cool new one that I'm adding to this year's setup. So if you wanna get to airdrop quicker, you can add that right there. What else we got? We got iCloud, burn, there's the eject tool, which I think is clutch. So you got the delete button and stuff. Oh, this is really cool. This is really fire. Oh, new folder. Now, let me tell you this, right? On the new Max in the Finder thing, I always gotta go click over here to find new folder, but the fact that I could just click right here and get it quickly is gonna be super duper clutch. Now, another thing that I do uh, for my Finder to optimize it is I'm gonna go into the show view options for my Finder, and this is super clutch. I'm always going to have it group by kind, because that's something else that I like in my finder, but there's more to this. Okay, so we got those quick view options and toolbar hacks out the way. Now let's get into the finder setting. Command comma is a quick way to get to the settings of anything or any app that you're in currently. Some people like to show their hard disk on their desktop, and it's simply done by clicking this hard disk checkbox right here. Now, another thing that I'm big on is customizing my sidebar for my finder. It makes navigating my Mac and finding things so much easier and so much quicker. So movies, I always check that. I check the music, I check the pictures. You can check your main hard drive if you want it there so you get to like the main hard drive, but those are the main ones I do. And I'm gonna show you exactly why in a hot second. Now, further than that, if you have folders that you'd like to get to quickly, you can also drag those to your sidebar. So give me a quick second. Let me grab uh, some wallpapers really quick because I'm gonna show you guys how to customize your wallpapers and how to have a quick folder for all of your wallpapers. So I'm gonna go to this website called Wallpaper Cave. Let's do a search for it really quick. Okay, so I found these abstract sunset uh, wallpapers, right? Click, hit download wallpaper. I'm gonna download a bunch of these really quick. Now you see how instantly after I downloaded that, it popped out. I don't like that. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that really quick. It's in your Safari settings. So if you go in Safari settings and right here, instantly on the front page, Open save files after downloading. You uncheck that because that is absolutely annoying a lot of times and I'm not a fan of that. Bam, okay, so I got three quick little uh, wallpapers really fast. So I'm gonna go here to my pictures and then I'm gonna create a new folder with my new toolbar click, right? Uh, label it wallpapers really quick. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a new folder and I'm gonna go to downloads where I just downloaded those three wallpapers. Let me get the three fingers three finger drag, <laughs> make it nice and easy, let go. So now I have these wallpapers, right? I have this folder that I want quick access to. I literally can grab it and drag it over here and now it's always in my sidebar for quick access. And that's super cool because like when you do certain things like you're about to upload and you know how you click browse and then your finder pops up, you got quick access to certain folders to get you quicker to files that you're trying to upload or do whatever. So let me show you exactly why that's clutch. Let me go into my system settings and I'm gonna click on wallpapers and change them, right? So with Super Clutch and your wallpaper settings, you can add a folder. So if I go to choose folder, as you guys can see right here on my sidebar clutch, I'm just gonna click there and tap choose. And it's super quick, super easy. So now I have quick access to these uh, backgrounds that I just downloaded. I think I'm gonna roll with this one for now. 
So those are some quick ways to optimize your finder bar. I showed you guys how to get your menu bar set up. I showed you guys how to get your screen resolution and we're not done. I got more tips for you. So hold on, baby, let's get it. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you guys is hot corners. Some of you guys might like using these. I'm not a fan of them, but there's a reason why and I'll show you a fix for that really quick. So if we go into desktop and dock and we scroll down to the bottom and we hit hot corners, you guys have the option to drag your mouse to these corners and have actions happen. Like right here is for quick notes. So if I drag right here, this pops up for a quick note. I could click it and then I'm able to do a real quick note jot in or jot down. So that's super clutch for people who take a ton of notes. And that's the default one that's always there. But let's just say I want to lock my screen. If I choose lock screen, now when I drag down there into the corner, it's gonna lock my screen. But let's just say I accidentally, you know, drag my mouse into that corner and then it locks my screen and I didn't want it to do that. There's a way that you can prevent that from happening. So next time when you go to lock screen, you hold the shift and then you click lock screen. So now you see how it has the shift icon there, which means that hot corner action won't happen until I hold shift and drag to that corner. So that allows for the hot corners to be useful to you without being a hindrance. Let's set up some other hot corners. So we got the lock screen there. Uh, I can put the display to sleep right here. Actually, you know what? We forgot to hit the shift. Boom, display sleep. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, now unsleep it. And what other type of hot corners do they have available here? They have disabled screen. Oh, start screensaver. So this is cool because now I get to show you guys the screensavers uh, that are new in macOS Sonoma and they're super fire. Let's say I choose this screensaver and then I go up to this top corner. Let me turn up the brightness. Look at these screensavers, they are fire. And if you're used to having Apple TV, then you know uh, about these, right? All right, let me see, Utah evening. Look at this, these are super dope. So um, I think I'm gonna stop it right here. I want you to hit the comment section down below and let me know about any MacBook tips or Mac tips that I did not go over so that I can add them to my MacBook Pro as I set up this M3 and enjoy uh, my empty bank account. So hopefully all of these tips help you become a pro at Mac OS on your MacBook Pro or your new Mac. My name is CJ, this is The Tech Corner. Thank you for joining me for these top tips for your new MacBooks. Peace. You technology snobs, technology snobs, I done just about had it with all of y'all. Listen, huh, duck. <laughs> no watch, no diamonds, no watch, good timing, yeah. No watch, no diamonds, no watch, good timing, yeah. Need no middleman, I'm the man of man, send it in. I like what I like, me, I know my rights, it's sipping in. I like having fun, I do what I want, it's what it is. For my son and son, for my daughters, yeah, it's for my twin. I work through the night.